Cool. Uh, Hi, everyone. I'm Alberto and Nick here from Latino Tax Pro and Matt from Avalara. Uh, we have another webinar for you guys. Today, we're going to be talking about sales tax. Uh, how are you doing, Matt? I'm doing well. Doing well. It's always an exciting day to talk sales tax and, and be on the phone with everybody. So looking forward to you today. Nice. Uh, you want to give a quick introduction on yourself and about Avalara while people come in? Sure. Yeah. So I've been with Avalara for over five years and uh, we are a global sales tax automation company. We have uh, direct integrations into about 750 platforms today. And, and our goals are to, to help clients uh, mitigate risk, uh, achieve sales tax compliance, help with any past liabilities and, and really set a compliance path moving forward so we can uh, automate you know, the, the, the daunting task of sales tax because every state's different. It's always challenging. And then allowing companies to focus on on, you know, revenue generating activities, things that are really important to their business. Yeah, they, they, they get to focus on what they do, right? <laughs> they get to run their business instead of worrying about all the sales tax uh, regulations and, and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, um, before you jump in, Matt, uh, I was talking to my brother about this yesterday. And he's a CPA here. And he's saying one of the questions that he always gets from his clients is what happens when it's November and they hit that threshold? Do they have to pay sales tax for all everything throughout the year or is it just after when they hit the threshold? Yeah, it's a really good question. And, and, and I have to answer it in a very common, uh, common mm -hmm. theme because I'm not a CPA nor a tax attorney, so I can't give direct advice. But most states are looking for you to get registered once you hit that threshold and then collect tax moving forward. However, there are a handful of states that want to look back at some time period. It's not very common, uh, but if you go on the direct uh, Department of Revenue website for the individual states, the specific states, you can get some direct guidance on what they say. I have some stuff I'll put in the chat uh, throughout the webinar today that can kind of tell what you need to do uh, where it doesn't come directly from me. So I, I'll put that in the, in the Zoom along uh, throughout the call today. So, so again, it, it depends on the state, right? But after you hit that threshold, that's when, okay, I, I seriously need to start thinking about this. Are we doing some yeah. research? We're reaching out yeah. to people like you. Yeah, we, uh, most companies are, are taking the approach to, you know, once I hit it, I mean, I'm going to get registered once I get to about the 80, 90% threshold in that state. So then once I'm at 100, I can collect tax and, and start filing moving forward. So that's what we're seeing uh, for the most part. Awesome. Perfect. Uh, that was a, a good answer. Yeah, because my brother said that that's always very tricky and, and it's, there's always a lot of things that go here and there and it's a complicated issue. Um, for everybody on Facebook and on Zoom, th this is an open discussion. So if you have questions and comments, go ahead and type them in and then we'll let Matt know that there's uh, some questions or comments or feedback or whatever. Uh, cool. Uh, with that said, it's all yours, Matt. Take it away. Awesome. Thank you very much. And thank you, everybody, for taking the time out of your day today. I have about 30 slides I'm going to cover. Typically takes me about 30 minutes or so. Uh, any questions that do pop up, please type those in right when uh, you get to the point where you have a question. Uh, and really want to thank the folks at uh, Latino Tax Pro. We have a great partnership and really love working with uh, uh, the folks over there. So we'll go ahead and get started. I, I mentioned earlier, I've been at Avalara for over five years and have focused re really on the QuickBooks space, uh, the Amazon or the Marketplace sellers are really the small to medium sized businesses uh, that are looking to automate for the first time. So as an agenda today, we're going to do a high level sales tax overview. Uh, we're going to talk about economic nexus and what that really means as, as, a, as a very broad definition, then do a deep dive into South Dakota versus Wayfair what you need to do for your particular company and how it's going to impact you. We'll discuss the three month sales tax and then also how you can automate tax compliance. We have some very light offerings that are just kind of a get started. And then we have a very uh, complex uh, co full compliance solution for uh, companies that may have a really difficult and really challenging tax profile. So, and I'll elaborate on what those two mean. So to begin with sales tax, it's really hard, right? It's very difficult. And there's over 12,000 taxing jurisdictions across the U.S. And what's really important is your company is going to be responsible for collecting or emitting sales tax on behalf of your sell, uh, the people you're selling to, assuming you have an obligation to collect tax in that state, number one, and then also assuming uh, what you're selling is even taxable. And that's one of the things that comes up a lot is that you may be selling something that's not taxable. You can see here a couple exceptions, right? Product and service uh, ex uh, exemptions from state to state. If you're selling to a customer that's exempt, you want to make sure 
that you get the piece of paper, the PDF, or the certificate that proves why they are not taxable. So whether they're a government entity, a, uh, a, a church, um, uh, a university, or something like that, any of those uh, types of businesses you're selling to, it's your responsibility as a seller to be able to provide documentation for why you didn't charge those particular companies sales tax. It's very important. I've talked to a lot of uh, CPAs and tax attorneys in the last couple of years, and they said one of the number one things people look at when you go through a sales tax audit is the invoices in the states that you're required to charge tax on that have zero tax. So that's why I say exemption certificates are very important. So if you've never collected them before, make sure you get those now. Just tell your, the people you're selling to, you're updating your books for 2020 and you need to get an updated certificate on file. This is very, very important. Uh, the taxability exemptions are gonna vary from state to state. Software as a service may be taxable in South Carolina, but uh, exempt in North Carolina, every state's different. And then think of everything that goes into uh, an, an actual order, right? Uh, the who, what, when, where, why, and how. You'll hear me say the words taxing authority quite a few times today. Taxing authority is just a fancy word for a state. And then there are some individual states that have sourcing rules. So if you're shipping from, ship uh, your, your office is in, in that state and you're shipping to that state, you may even charge tax based on wherever the bill to is located. So uh, the individual sourcing rules are very important, really challenging. Um, so it all starts with nexus, right? Nexus is an industry term that means you've established some sort of physical presence or a tie to a taxing authority. So I'll give a bunch of examples today and you can then determine and kind of sit back and go, okay, I think I have a tie with this state or I have a nexus obligation in Florida or South Carolina. Uh, but sales tax nexus is really important. It's when you've established enough of a presence or a tie or a connection to that state that's then going to require you to collect remit sales tax moving forward. And I like to leave this one up on the screen for a couple minutes. So this is what, th these are what we like to consider the top 10 to 15 reasons why companies have to get registered for sales tax, right? So think about it. If I'm located in North Carolina, and let's take, I think some folks on the call might be located down in uh, South Carolina or Florida. If you have any of these things on the screen outside of the states you're located in, so if you have any, anything on the screen here outside of where you're living right now, those would probably be the states that you may need to be registered in for sales tax purposes. So do you have inventory in a state? Do you cross the state line to do service or repairs? Uh, do you have contract employees? Do you have multiple state locations? Wherever you have boots on the ground, inventory, employees, contract employees, all that, those are the states you should be collecting and remitting sales tax in uh, to, to make sure you stay compliant. And those are just the, the you know, the, again, the main reasons that, they, that they've considered uh, establishing Nexus. Um, these are really, really important. And we'll get into economic Nexus here shortly. Now, nine out of the 10 folks that I talk to are typically under the impression that if I need to charge sales tax, it's just based on a rate or a zip code. Well, there's a lot more that goes into it than that. So there's about five or six things. So number one, when you're making a tax determination, calculating tax on an invoice or in the shopping cart, you need to first consider, do I have a obligation to collect tax in that state? So do I have nexus? Number two, keeping up to date with the product taxability. Are you selling something that's even taxable? If you're selling tangible personal property, like a calculator or, or a pen, those are fully taxable items. TPP as we call it for short uh, here at Avalara. They're fully taxable, right? It's something you can touch. It's a tangible good. When you get into uh, services and maintenance contracts and software, those are uh, offerings that have varying taxability and those will vary from state to state. Uh, number three, keeping up to date with the jurisdictional rate assignments. I spoke with a guy last week. He was, he was in Texas. He was charging one rate in Texas for like 10 years. And then when I told him how Texas had 1,698 taxing jurisdictions, he got a little nervous. Uh, needless to say, he wasn't doing everything accurately, uh, but we're working to, to help him get straightened out. Number four, exemption, certific exemption certificates. I touched on that a couple minutes ago. And then once you've done all of that right, you get the lovely joy of filing and remitting sales tax returns, which is also really difficult. And what we hear is that it's the most manual effort and that's where they see the most errors you know, on the human side. So that's why people want to automate the returns filing process. I've never met anyone that likes filing tax returns. 
I've been working on it for six years. However, we have about 120 people in our in our company here at Avalara, and that's all they do is file tax returns. So uh, they seem pretty happy. We must pay them pretty well um, because that's all they do is file returns every month, and uh, it's a very tough job. Uh, but we uh, we filed, I think, over it's like six million tax returns last year, so a lot. And then would you be ready, heaven forbid, you went through a sales tax audit? So a lot of people feel good about the sales tax audit before the webinar, and then they're a little uneasy when they get to the end. But uh, we'll cover everything today. So what's all the fuss about, right? Everybody's talking about this whole South Dakota Wayfair. Well, what happened was 13 months ago, the entire sales tax world got flipped on its head. And South Dakota went to the Supreme Court, and they said... The way people buy and sell products has drastically changed. So we want you to change the rules. We want you to overturn the rule that you have to, that said you had to have a physical presence in order to charge sales tax. And the Supreme Court actually ruled in favor of South Dakota. And they said on June 21st of last year, you can now start charging sales tax to out-of-state sellers so long as they hit a certain amount of sales in your state. So now what's changing and what has changed is that your customers are effectively the ones that are determining where you have to collect your emit tax. And what I mean by that is, the, the best example is for South Dakota specifically, if you do $100,000 or, or being the keyword, 200 individual transactions into that state, you would have to get registered. So let's say I live in Florida and I sell these really cool calculators and they have like a South Dakota logo or something on them. So people there really like them. If I sell 200 of them, individual orders to South Dakota out of my garage in Florida, I would then have to get registered to collect them at sales tax in that state moving forward. So that's what I, that's what I mean when I say they are now, your customers are now the ones determining where you have to get registered for sales tax. This went into effect on November 1st of 2018 and the physical presence rule is still there. So if you have a physical presence, you still have to get registered. Now what you have to monitor is the states where you're gonna hit uh, have the highest amount of sales or the most transactions and then do a cross-reference and see if those states in particular have an economic nexus threshold. So these are some of the common questions. Uh, if I'm already registered in South Dakota, does this court decision apply to me? And the answer is no. If you're already registered in a state for sales tax, it doesn't make any difference. You're going to have to get registered. Uh, you're already registered. You're already collecting tax. No changes. Number two, does the ruling apply to online transactions? And it does. It applies to online and offline. So it's not just your e-commerce store or if you're selling on a marketplace, it's total transactions. So you need to look at all of your transactions that are happening. A lot of people don't sell online. You may be doing QuickBooks and you run a, a plumbing or a HVAC company. You don't, probably don't have a shopping cart, right? So it's going to be total transactions uh, online and offline. Number three, does the economic nexus rule apply to non-taxable transactions? And it does. So every state is different. South Carolina, <clears throat> excuse me, South Carolina states that even if you're selling something that's not taxable, if you hit $100,000 worth of sales, you're potentially, you still have to get registered in that state. So it applies to non-taxable and taxable transactions. And in no way is it going to have any impact on the total amount of it, it no way is it going to have any impact on uh, changing or altering if something you're selling is taxable or not. So if we look back at 2018, let's let's talk about this for a couple minutes. So there are, for, for just for the record, to clear some of the, the misconception, a lot of people think there's 50 states that collect tax. Well, there's only 45 states plus Washington, D.C. Uh, there's five states that don't do tax, and those are what we call the nomad states, which are New Hampshire, Oregon, Montana, Alaska, and Delaware. So of the 45 states plus DC that collect tax, 42, and I think I need to update this, 43 now currently have put economic nexus thresholds in place. So of the 46 states that collect tax, 43 of them have put a threshold in place saying, if you sell a certain amount into our state, we're gonna require you to get registered. So it's kind of scary times. 24 states put the collection uh, obligations on the marketplaces. So if you're selling on Amazon and the only reason you would ever have to get registered is because uh, of sales tax purposes for is in, in an Amazon state, like the FBA warehouses, which I'll touch on here in a few minutes, they're actually gonna be uh, remitting the sales tax on behalf of their sellers. And we've seen that number grow. That gets really complicated and a little, and a lot of questions typically come up. If you have any questions, please type them in, uh, and I can definitely answer them when we get towards the end. Uh, five states put use tax reporting requirements, and there were a couple states that adopted uh, click-through nexus. So if you're running a, an advertisement on someone else's website uh, or a banner, that may be able to that may require you 
to have to get registered in that particular state. So every state is different, uh, but there are a couple that have put rules like that in place. Before October of 2017, uh, so a lot has changed in the last 14 months, 15 months, there were seven states that already had economic nexus. It just wasn't a big deal. It wasn't talked about. It was just a couple. Uh, there were seven, I think, or eight in particular. So if we look back at what happened, at what it was like in 2017, and then we fast forward from October of 17 all the way to uh, 8.30 of right now, you can see how many states have put in economic nexus. So other than the states that don't collect tax, Missouri and Florida, uh, Vermont, those are the only other states that we are just waiting to hear. Uh, so a lot of states have put uh, economic nexus in place. And what I like to say is let's imagine you're located in West Virginia and you sell these big furry winter raincoats and you predominantly sell those to the Northeast. Well, what'll have to happen is you, you now as a small business have to track all of the states where you have the majority of your sales and then see if those states in particular have an economic nexus threshold. And if they do, and if you pass it, you're then going to have to get registered in those particular states moving forward. So, so really difficult. What we're seeing is a lot of companies used to only have to collect tax in one or two states. Now they're having to get registered to collect sales tax in, you know, four, five, six, 10, 30, 40 states uh, across the country just because they have such a high dollar amount. So let's think about it. If you're a $5 million company, and I'm not really good at math, but if you divide that by 46, odds are you're going to go over $100,000 $100, in probably five to 10 states. Those are going to be the states you're going to have to get registered in. So uh, really difficult. So what does economic nexus mean? I'm kind of describing it to you, but I like to give a real definition because this usually helps the cause. So economic nexus is a tax collection obligation imposed on sellers based on their level of economic activity within a state. And unlike physical presence, it's based entirely on the amount, uh, transaction amount of sales, or in some states it's and the sales revenue. So if your revenue is high enough, you may have to get registered in those particular states as well. And here's one of the questions I think you, you had asked right before we got started, which is great. So when a threshold is crossed, going forward, a corporation should be collecting taxes or an exemption form. So when do you need to start? So once you've hit that threshold, then the magnifying glass is kind of coming down to you saying, okay, I now need to get registered. I need to start collecting tax and remitting tax moving forward. And I'll leave this up for a couple minutes so everybody can read it. Um, I have to side on the, the, the side of caution just because again, I can't give direct tax advice, uh, but it is really important where some states will say, just get registered moving forward. The goal of this ruling is to get companies registered, moving forward, file tax returns, excuse me, remit tax moving forward. There's a handful of states that are gonna try and go back and see what you've done over the past 12 months. California is a tough one. I've heard Illinois, uh, I think Texas is a little tricky as well, but for the most part, if you're getting registered and then you're filing a tax return moving forward, states are probably gonna leave you alone. Again, not a CPA, tax attorney can't give you advice on that, but uh, just speaking to uh, all the companies I've worked with over the past 14 months. Now, what does it mean for somebody that says, hey, Matt, I don't have QuickBooks or I, I sell on a marketplace? Well, one of the common uh, places people sell products when they are selling Omnichannel is Amazon. Amazon's this huge company and they're really smart with what they do. Now, as you can see on the slide here, there are 30 states where Amazon has fulfillment warehouses, so FBA warehouses. 27 of those 30 states deem that third-party inventory is a nexus building activity. So by enrolling in the FBA program, you might potentially have to get registered in a lot of states just because you solely have inventory. And when we were talking about Nexus earlier, Nexus means you have a physical presence. And a lot of states that collect tax are under the impression that inventory, and they use it as one of their rules. Oops, sorry about this. Uh, one of the states that we'll talk to you about that is saying, because you're enrolling in the FBA program, you're going to have to get registered in a bunch of these additional states. Now, granted, 24 of the states that are out there are marketplace facilitator states, but if you're selling on another channel or if you have inventory or some other reason to collect tax, you're still going to have to get registered in those particular states. And I mentioned the marketplace facilitators. Here's a list of some of the states that have come across the effective date, and then also uh, some information on uh, local taxes. Uh, Amazon is responsible for uh, the state level tax returns, as well as the remittance as well. <clears throat> 
So what does it mean for your business? This is one of the questions. Like, Matt, this all sounds great. It's really challenging, but what does it mean? How's it going to impact me? Well, you're going to have to get registered in additional states. So get, getting registered, getting a tax ID in an individual state so you can legally collect remit tax is going to be really important. Typically, we uh, can do the registrations for you if you're, if you're looking for it. Um, it takes about you know, a week to get them back. Uh, cost is $1.99 per state. Uh, you're going to see more filings, right? You were only having to get registered in one or two states before, or you were, and then now you're having to get registered in upwards of 10 or 11 states. You're going to have to get registered in more states, file more tax returns in additional states, and the impact on your business is going to be all the different types of industries. So you're going to have drop shippers, exempt sellers, uh, direct sellers are going to be involved, all sorts of businesses, tens of thousands of businesses are having to get registered every single day. And, you know, we're seeing a lot of those folks reach out to us to help automate that particular part of their business. So we have some tips and tricks to keep up. Uh, and these will be some of the takeaways where, 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 where I talk about how much we can help. And again, we can help as much or as little as you need. But uh, there's about five steps here that we talk. Number one, Know where you need to be collecting remitting sales tax. So figure out what states you do need to get registered in. Avalara can do that. We can do a Nexus study. I'll walk through you know, the steps and then how we can help. Uh, we can then get you registered to collect remit sales tax moving forward. Making sure you calculate the proper amount of sales tax. Tracking and managing if you have any exempt sales. And then remitting the sales tax to the authority. So filing and remitting. So uh, in the beginning, we can do a Nexus study. Avalara will do a Nexus study for $4,500 to determine what states you do have obligations. We ask you a bunch of questions about your prior 12 months of business activities. Then we give you a very detailed report and tell you how many uh, states we believe you need to be registered in. We then have a couple options as far as the registrations. And I'll walk through uh, one of the programs where we can get you some free registrations as well. Everybody likes free. Uh, Avatax is our card product to calculate and uh, determine taxability within uh, your shopping cart and or QuickBooks or whatever accounting system you're using. Uh, number four, we can help manage the certificate. So we have Avalara Cert Capture, which will help to store, maintain, validate, and manage the life cycle of exemption certificates on an ongoing basis. And then number five, file the sales tax returns. I mentioned earlier that's the most error-prone uh, component to tax compliance. If you're the only person for the company that files the tax returns and you just happen to you know, not want to come in that day, uh, that can be very problematic if you're the only person who knows how to file the tax returns. So that's why we're erring on the side of caution to, to put some automation in place. So our core product, and I mentioned this a little bit yesterday, is Avatax. Now, Avatax is a direct integration to your accounting software uh, where we will calculate tax. So we have hundreds of these pre-built direct integrations where we can calculate the tax and determine taxability. So what will happen is, and you can see an invoice uh, looks like QuickBooks on the screen here. When you go to save an invoice and you've told Avalara what state you collect or remit tax in, uh, you'll see here, so when you uh, save that invoice and we see the, uh, the ship to address is located in California or a state you told us, in real time, we'll properly assign the rates and properly assign the rules and make a tax determination in under two-tenths of a second. So we look at everything based on the ship to address, and then we'll take into account uh, city, state, county, any special taxes that are applicable, and then uh, automate the complete uh, detailed information uh, as far as whether or not those individual items are taxable or not. So once we've determined the sales tax, we can then file the sales tax and remit the payments. It's about a 90% hands-off approach. You'll see on the very bottom, Avatax doesn't support cash basis accounting. We do require companies to be on an accrual basis. It's really important uh, to leverage Avalara and leverage Avatax to be on an accrual basis for the simple point of uh, filing and remitting because when we uh, do the tax calculation on the invoice, we look at that date as an anchor and then we're going to file and remit and report on behalf of that exact date. So I mentioned earlier, we don't do zip code based tax calculations and that's what a lot of people think tax is based on. So this is a great example. This is Commerce City, Colorado. This is the same zip code, the same street and the same state. And all the houses in blue in this residential neighborhood have a composite tax rate of 9.25%. And then all the houses in green have a composite tax rate of 4.75%, which is almost a 5% delta from one side of the street to the next. 
Now, if you were doing a thousand invoices a year, this would be really problematic. So this is one of the things where we say it's a good thing to keep an eye on and why we don't do zip codes and we do rooftop level calculations. Now, not every state is like this. Uh, that's a big difference for states like Colorado, Louisiana, and Alabama. Um, but these, this is where we're gonna, we, we, we harp on you know, accuracy, rooftop level calculations, uh, handling the product taxability, because if you do this wrong, a thousand times a month could be very problematic. And what's key is the state really doesn't care if you're charging four, three, two, one percent. But if they know you're owed 9.2 for two, that's what they're expecting is 9.2 percent. That's what they're going to expect you to remit uh, on behalf of uh, the sellers when you are filing and remitting tax returns. All right, so we're going to spend the next couple minutes talking about the streamlined sales tax. So the streamlined sales tax is a group of 24 states that got together. Uh, they are put in uniform tax definitions, uh, audit process, uh, specific tax codes, and taxability for the, ex for the exact uh, items that are being sold. And it's a really cool thing. So it started in 1999, and their goal was to simplify tax collection on behalf of uh, the 24 states that are part of the member association. And you can see here what those 24 states are. So one of the things that's really important is there's 46 states that collect sales tax. 24 of those 46, we can offer free services in those states as Avalara is your certified service provider. So of these 24 states, you wanna look at, am I gonna to have to get registered in those particular states just solely because uh, of economic access? And if so, then I may be a good fit for a candidate for the SST. And I'll walk through what the volunteer status uh, and all of that stuff means uh, in addition uh, here shortly. So some of the benefits, if you're a volunteer remitter, you can get registered for free. You can get a single tax ID number in those states. Um, we do, a, we have the, a very strict process as far as the exemption certificates, uh, but by registering for the SST and if Avalar is your CSP, we offer free uh, registrations, free returns filing. It's very beneficial. Um, takes a little bit of time to get set up just because it is very important. And these are the reasons where you'd be able to consider a volunteer status. So as long as you don't have a fixed place of business in that state for the past 30 days, as long as you don't have more than $50,000 worth of personal property, if you have less than $50,000 worth of payroll in that particular state, you can then get volunteer status, which would be a free registration, free returns filing. And if the only reason you're going to be getting registered in those states is economic nexus, let's say you just have a location in Florida, but you're going to hit over $100,000 in a bunch of these states, SST would be a very beneficial thing. There's only a couple companies that are S uh, CSB and we've actually been working with them for, uh, let's see, I think I wanna say over 10 years now. So it's a very, very good, good uh, program if you can get in, uh, very beneficial. So I like to say that we can help as much or as little as you need. Again, we can help determine which states you have nexus in. We can then provide a very detailed report. We can help with the registrations, and then we offer a couple of options as far as the filing and remittance. Uh, sales tax is really challenging. We're in the era where now is the time to you know do what you do best, outsource all the rest. Uh, sales tax is our problem, right? Let us handle it, and then you can go about uh, focusing on things that are going to generate money for your company. Uh, really help you moving forward. Uh, focus on your business, and and allow us to handle the sales tax compliance piece. All right, well, I got right through everything in just under 30 minutes, so we're, we're really good. I'm gonna wait and see if we have any other questions. I'm sure a couple will come up, and I'm gonna put my contact information uh, on the screen here, and I'm gonna pause and uh, see if we have any questions that come in. Well, just to let you know, at the moment, I was looking at Facebook, and there are no questions, and at this point, aren't any questions. You must be very, very clear but I'll let you know if there are any that show up. Okay, and one of the questions I think I had yesterday, and thank you for, for letting me know is, uh, you know, business companies are always really curious to how often they need to file tax returns. So as you're getting registered in these states, the states themselves are gonna determine well, when you need to get registered, 
uh, excuse me, they're gonna determine what forms you need to file and also how often. So the state determines your filing frequency as well as uh, which form you're gonna file. You would then bring those forms and the frequencies to Avalara and we decide where we need to plug into to calculate tax and then our software will automate that key component uh, of, the, of the filing in the remittance states. Part of using Avalara is telling us, you know, what you sell, what state you're registered in, uh, what forms you file, and then Avatax can automate that uh, moving forward. It's just like anything. When you buy a new car or you buy a new uh, cell phone or something along those lines, you know, it's going to take 30 to 45 days before you feel fully comfortable with the solution because this is something that businesses have never automated in the past, right? Now's the time to, to focus on things that you can uh, automate uh, with artificial intelligence and a lot of these other things that are coming to light in the era of technology. Uh, automating tax compliance is very important and it's gonna be one of those things that nobody's gonna be doing manually you know, a year or two years from now. So we're seeing a lot of folks having to get registered and, and we're helping a lot of companies achieve compliance. So very important on that front. And our services are a la carte, right? So you could just have us calculate the tax. You could have your CPA or your bookkeeper, whoever's always filed your returns, they can do those for you. Um, the exemption certificates, exemption certificates are really important. Again, we'll store, maintain, validate, manage the life cycle of those certificates. That's really low hanging fruit for sales tax auditors. Uh, so keeping your control over that. If you, if you don't have a lot of sales tax, it's calculated, but uh, you do uh, have 90% of your customer base that's exempt. That could be a lot of of exemption certificates. So just want to make sure you're keeping those on file, having those, uh, heaven forbid you go through a sales tax audit. So some of the common questions we get. So if you do have any questions, by all means, if you are on Facebook, you can write the comment and I will be sure to ask Matt the question. Or if you are on our webinar, then you can type in your questions either under the Q&A or the chat. But good. There's your information too, Matt, where they can reach you. Awesome. Definitely. Yeah. It's always, uh, it's good to have a contact and you know, what we've seen is, you know, CPAs and, and bookkeepers and accountants and QuickBooks pro advisors for the longest time have always, you know, helped out their clients because, you know, they only have one or two states to deal with. And a lot of times it was the state that they're located in. Well, now having to get registered and collect, file, determine product taxability and in all of these states, you know, it's making it a little more challenging and uh, I, we're seeing a lot of those folks not want to be liable for it. So we're, we're, we're definitely automating it for a lot of other companies and, and, and helping out those pro advisors, you know, in a referral program and a partnership as well. And from a consumer standpoint, I know even just myself and my wife, we're, you know, an older generation and yet we find more and more times we're buying online. And that in would be anywhere in the country. And so someone is collecting that sales tax and then of course we're paying it. But as more and more people go internet purchases, this, this is going to impact more and more businesses. Exactly. And you have to think about it. Like it impact, this, imp this ruling impacts everybody, right? It, it's total sales. So you may only have a presence in one or two states, but if you sell a certain amount into a state, but you never go there, now you're going to have to get registered. Like South Carolina, it's, it's unbelievable. You could be selling something that's not even taxable, but you do $100,000. I spoke with a guy uh, two weeks ago. They do software uh, maintenance contracts, so software as a service, and it's $25,000 a year. He said, well, so I just have my third sale in South Carolina, so we're at 75. So you mean when I get to the next one, I'm going to have to get registered moving forward after that? And unfortunately, yeah. And now's the time to be able to put, a, put something in place to where you can track those um, and, and just be ready as you get registered. And again, we can help with the registrations. We can do the calculations, the filings, and then also exemption certificates as well. Fantastic. And again, if there's any other questions that come up, you know, after the webinar today, please shoot me an email or, or talk with our, our folks over at tax, uh, Latino Tax Professionals. We can definitely help uh, have a conversation. We have a, a bunch of free trials for the software, so you can leverage that as well. And then again, keep in mind the streamlined sales tax program is great. The key components to the SST is that we're calculating the tax, uh, you're using our tax codes. We do require that if you're going to go through that program. Uh, but again, of the 46 states that collect tax, as long as you're a volunteer remitter, you could get registered for free. And then we can file the sales tax returns for free in those 24 states. So it's a very good offering. 
Fantastic. Looks like we do have, it's not a question, but uh, Jasmine has put in here, I would like to gather more information to present to the company I work for. So. Okay, perfect. Jasmine, just shoot me an email and then I'll reply back with a, a bunch of uh, great information on how you set up Avalara, what we need for pricing. Um, I have a Word document that, that kind of outlines everything. It puts information on the SST, pricing for registrations. Uh, it'd be a good thing to share with them. And then you could come back and say, hey, look, here's, here's what their metrics are, their volume. You know, here's where we need integrations and we could then quote some pricing for you. So uh, just jot down my email, matthew.hammond at avalara.com or feel free to, to give me a shout sometime. I'll be in the office all day tomorrow uh, as we close out the month. So again, if there's any other questions, now's the time to put it in there or you have the information. And we'll be at the Account Tech Show uh, next week in Boston if there's anybody else going up there as well. So looking forward for a, a big turnout there. I know it's a great event. It's one of the larger shows they have uh, uh, throughout the year, uh, Account Techs and then also QuickBooks Connect. But we'll be there. So stop and see us and uh, get some orange swag to, to show some Avalara stuff in your office. And we look forward to talking to everybody. Excellent. Thank you. Thank awesome. you. For excellent information. Oh. oh, Jasmine just wrote back. Uh, thank you, Matthew. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate your time and hope to hear from you soon. Thank you. Great presentation and we'll be in touch. Y'all have a Thanks. great rest of the day. Thanks, everyone. Take care, bye.